Hello guys, so in today's video, I will be talking about the Bordel scale and how that will be able to help you in your astrophotography. So, I've already tackled about the Bordel scale in a previous video of mine where I talk about how you can take pictures with the night sky using a smartphone. But in today's video, I'll be talking about the Bordel scale in a more in-depth fashion. So, the Bordel scale is simply a 9-level numeric scale that measures the brightness of the night sky in a particular location. It also determines what objects you can see in the night sky and how much detail you can see from those objects. And it also determines the interference of light pollution in your stargazing or astrophotography. So basically, the lower the number is, the more stars you can see, with 1 being the lowest and with 9 being the highest. In a Bortle 9 location, like in the center of New York City, you won't be able to see any stars at all or very few stars here and there. But the night sky itself will be mostly blank. You might be able to see some planets like Jupiter, and if you're at the right time, you can also see the moon and some of the brightest stars in the night sky, but other than that, those are the only things that you can see in a Bortel 9 location. Bortel 9 is assigned to places that are in the inner portions of the city that emit a lot of light, like in the center of New York City. But on the other hand, if you're in a Bortel 1 location, you'd be able to see plenty of detail in the night sky, and with the galactic core of the Milky Way is in the sky and the moon is not present, then the Milky Way will be able to cast shadows on the ground, even though there's no moon to begin with, nor are there other light sources anywhere around you other than the night sky. Jupiter and Venus can interfere with your night adaptation as well. And you will also be able to see the Milky Way in very, very great detail, along with many other stars and many other messier objects in the night sky, including the Andromeda Galaxy. So each level between 9 and 1 gives you a progressively better chance at seeing more detail in the night sky. So the darker the location, the lower the number. A Bortle 9 to 8 is what's known as an inner city sky. And in a night sky like that, most of the stars in the constellations are invisible, there's a distinct air glow in the sky, and only planets and the moon are visible. But the Milky Way is also invisible, and things like the zodiacal light and the Gigantian will be invisible as well. And few of the brightest star clusters, which is why it is so important for you to get away from all of that light pollution. If you want to see more stars, with a Bortle rating of 7 to 6, with Bortle 7 being suburban urban transition and Bortle 6 being a bright suburban sky, the things that you'll be able to see here are planets, the moon, and some constellations are visible. There is a distinct air glow in the night sky. More stars are visible as well. The Milky Way is only visible near the zenith, especially in a Bortle Class 6 location. Through a telescope, the brightest messier objects are pale ghosts of their true selves. M33 is not visible, and M31 is modestly apparent. So it's more like what you would see above suburbia. Clouds anyway in the sky appear fairly bright, but if it is cloudy, any of these ratings between Bortle 8 and 9, the clouds will tend to reflect a lot of that light pollution. And the problem with this is that the clouds will seem brighter, thus reducing the amount of things that you'll be able to see in the night sky. Now if you can get to a location between Bortle Class 5 or 4, which by the way I live in a border class 5 skies, closer to a transition zone to a border 6. In border class 5 to 4, with border class 5 being known as suburban sky and border class 4 being rural suburban transition, the Milky Way is visible with long exposures but bleached out. There is air glow towards the horizon. Planets, moons, and many stars and star clusters are visible. And only hints of the zodiacal light are seen on the best nights in autumn and spring. But even if you can see the Milky Way in a border class 5 to 4, It'll look very bleached out and you won't be able to see any colors from it. It lacks a lot of detail and you will mistake it for high clouds in these locations. But from where I am, I can only capture the Milky Way using my camera through long exposure photography, but I've never actually seen the Milky Way galaxy with my own eyes here in my home because the Milky Way cannot really go overhead from where I am from. In a Bortle Class 3 location, also known as Rural Skies, the Milky Way is visible and shows more detail. There's air glow lower on the horizon. Planets, moons, and thousands of stars are visible. And based on my experience, you can more easily see the galactic core of the Milky Way galaxy compared to the dimmer parts of the Milky Way. M15, M4, M5, and M22 are naked eye objects. And Messier 33 is easily visible with averted vision. 
This is also the location where things get really good because if you're photographing, say, the Milky Way in, in a Borzo Class 3 location, you'll be able to get more color coming from the Milky Way galaxy itself. Now, as for a Borzo Class 2 location, also known as typical dark skies, the Milky Way is visible and shows more detail, even the different parts of the Milky Way are visible. There is very little air glow toward the horizon. Planets, moons, and constellations are easily visible. And also, in this location, the clouds are only visible as dark holes in the sky. As in the only way for you to know that there's a cloud there is if there's an area of the night sky that has no stars whatsoever, just pitch black. Many messier objects and globular clusters are visible to the naked eye, and messier 33 is also easily seen with the naked eye. And the zodiacal light is distinctly yellowish and bright enough to cast shadows at dusk and dawn. You can also see all of the constellations in the night sky. You will also be able to see the darker tendrils of the Milky Way coming out from the core as well. And these tendrils are the shadowy parts of the Milky Way galaxy. And in the Bortle 1 location, this is as dark as you can get. And it's also known as an excellent dark sky site. And in this location, you'll be able to see all of the things in the night sky, visible to the naked eye. The Milky Way is very bright and shows plenty of detail and color. And if the moon is not present in the sky, the Scorpius and Sagittarius regions of the Milky Way galaxy cast obvious shadows as long as there are no other light sources around you besides the night sky. There is very little air glow towards the horizon, planets, moons, constellations, and many stars are visible. In fact, in a Bortle 1 location, you won't be able to distinguish between the constellations because there are so many stars everywhere. So as you can see, if you plan to move out to a darker location, you have to check the Bortel rating of that location before you go there. Many messier and globular clusters are naked eye objects, and Venus and Jupiter affect dark sky adaptation. And there are many ways for you to determine the Bortel scale of a particular location. One of the things that I use is lightpollutionmap.info. So you can pick any location that you want and you'll be able to see the Bortel rating of that particular location. So by looking for some locations around you, you can find some darker skies. But despite this, you also have to take into consideration the direction at which you're looking at if you want to photograph some things in the night sky. Because if you look in the direction of a city, you'll be getting more light pollution just by looking into that area in the form of a light dome or air glow towards the horizon. And that'll also reflect in your night sky images. So take it into careful consideration if you're wanting to do astrophotography in a darker location. So another way for you to know the best location to go to if you want to photograph in darker skies, you can use an app called Photopills, which is a paid app, but it will tell you where your subject will be in a given time period and in any given location. That's allowing you to know where you'll be facing if you go to this location instead of this location. And so with this, you'll be able to find some good locations near you. And you should also take into consideration how long it will take you to go to that location. And also, don't forget how safe that location is. Or if you have a vacation planned, you can work out where you'd like to go or maybe even plan to go somewhere else. And when it's darker and, and it's a new moon, so you can get some great night sky shots and have a good holiday under the stars. So the darkest place that I've been to is a Borto Class 2 location in the Camotes Islands. But the problem is that the light pollution coming from Cebu City is easily visible, even with the naked eye. So even though I'm in a Borto Class 2 location, the light dome of Cebu City in a way interfered with my stargazing and astrophotography in the Camotes Islands. So in planning things properly, you'll be able to tip the odds in your favor so that when the sky becomes clear and the moon is not in the sky you'll be able to know where to photograph and as well as how to photograph it so if you want to learn more about astrophotography i have many more videos that discuss other aspects in astrophotography as well as how you'll be able to successfully and properly capture the night sky with or without a star tracker or with or without a telescope or with a dslr or a smartphone as long as you have a camera with you so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe to help this channel grow and to not miss out on new videos. And if you found this video useful, don't forget to like it and share it to whoever might find it useful. And if you're planning to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.